Welcome to Tower and Tales Junior, a curated live play 5e Dungeons and Dragons podcast for kids and adults. In Tower and Tales Junior, we take a group of kids on a fantastical adventure full of friendship, adventure, and excitement using a modified 5e rule set. This podcast is created by and for kids. This is meant to be relatable and enjoyable. So let's see where they want to take the adventure today. I'm wondering if you'd go wandering with me. Through the wilderness and woods To where the winds are blowing free Through the darkness of the night Heading toward the morning light I wonder if you'd wander with me And I'll spread the word And you beat the drum We'll round up the troops And get the gang to come And we'll leave the street Welcome to Tavern Tales Junior. I'm Robin. I play Sasha Kikian, a wizard tabaxi who is lawfully good. Here's something funny that I've always been kind of. What happens when you plus Sasha and Volpina together? Well, you get DJ <laughs> because Sasha is blue and <laughs> Volpina is red and it makes purple. It would be a purple tabaxi. Because I'm a dragonborn, not a tabaxi. I know, but it's still kind of funny when you think about the colors. No offense. Anyways, the person to my left. Hi, I'm Savannah, and I play the role of DJ Ashardalong, a purple dragonborn. A fun fact about DJ is that if she's on your side, then things will go a lot better. For who? For your team. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. I hope that Triceratops obeys you and doesn't just cry because it lost its bait. Sorry. To the left of me is... Hi, my name is Caitlin, and I play the role of Volpina, a tabaxi ranger. And a fun fact about Volpina is that her favorite food is pickles. Ooh. I think we've known... I think we learned that before, but that's cool. That was me. Okay. Uh, that's fine by me, too. We all like pickles in this group. Everybody loves pickles. And to my left is... Hello, my name is Alex. I play the role of Chris Tuffer. And a fact about Ollie, Chris's overaptor, is that Ollie, when Chris is unaware of it, likes to nibble on his cloak. Didn't know that. that that's a new thing, too, right? And uh, to my left is... Well, I am Will, the ruler of Flash, Golden Dragon Flag, friend of Golden Dragon. By the way, Terry, he really likes to tear his clothes. His, his Terry cloak. wears clothes? No, he really likes to tear Flash's cloak. Oh, okay. Because he's Terry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's very Terry. And right beside me is the Dungeon Master. Hi, I'm Kyle, and I am the Dungeon Master for these five lovely and adorable children who will remain so for the course of today's session. We are playing Dungeons & Dragons, and we are specifically playing a 5e game set in the world of Faerun. It's kind of a different version of Faerun, because these kids have added a whole bunch of content in the way of places and locales that did not exist or do not currently exist on maps that I've seen. But nonetheless... Here we are. So let's all, as players, sitting in my basement studio, enter the world of the imagination. Let's drift out of our chairs and down through the floor and into the world of Faerun, where it is a stormy evening on the storm coast, and ships are tossed to and fro on stormy waves, and to the south... In the jungles of Tenjika, a 
band of the Lord's own with one wilderness explorer are fending off several large insects, giant man-sized insects, in the middle of the night in a clearing just outside of the capital city of Tanjika called Tanjika. The fight has raged long and hard, and some dinosaurs have had some trouble and some scrapes and some injuries from all of this fighting. And just as the swell of fighting reaches its climax, off in the distance, a loud crack sounds, startling the insects. And they all rush away from the fight fleeing as quickly as they could. One of the insects has already been killed. Which insect was that? I I thought it was the mosquito. Sure. (laughs) You guys hadn't actually killed anything in the last last session. So what insect? Or did you? All right, either way. So one insect had already been killed. The mosky straw kill or the most hooky. Which was the mosquito-shaped one? Yes. And another one was so brutally injured that it was not able to escape the clearing and died on the edge of the clearing itself. Which one was that one? That was the beetle with the large poisonous claw. Oh, wow. He died horribly on the edge of the forest. And the others have all fled into the jungles. Because he was defending off while they were fighting against us. Okay. They were like, defending the area. And then he had to come back very slowly with his wounds. These horrible insects have taken their leave. You do not know what could possibly have made that crack in the distance. Unless, perhaps, you're very skilled at nature. (laughs) If you're skilled in nature, I would take a nature check from you. I'm going to try. Go ahead. Anybody who would like to try may roll. 15. 17 in total. I rolled a 10. No, nothing there for you. The ranger doesn't want to roll? What are your skills? I have a 4. And you don't want to roll? Caitlin, you get plus four to your roll. Fourteen. That's not enough either. Anybody else? All right, we're waiting on one more roller. Go for it. I have a 16 in total. Oh, it's not enough yet. Not enough either. What was it? You guys don't know. 20? You guys have no idea what that karak was in the far off jungles that startled all those insects. Did Sav know? Nope. Nobody knows. You all stand there looking at each other not knowing what scared the insects. Some of you have some wounds and are a little injured, and it is very late, the very dark. Guys, well, let's just continue our watches. We really, really, really need to get some sleep for the dinosaur race coming up. I agree with that. Agreed. Uh, but what about that thing with the loud caca in the distance we don't know what it was but it sure startled those bugs and that's why we need to continue our watches we don't know what it was so we can't really we can head there but we're all really tired so it would be best to rest and well, still continue well, our what watches I'm kinding, thinking is maybe we should go a little ways into the trees or something because it yeah. probably heard all that fighting so it would know that something or that something is or something was in this clearing. Uh, we should probably head a little bit into these, but not too much. Our dinosaurs will need to stay with us, and it'll be real tight through the thickly brighter. You mean the underbrush? <laughs> the underbrush. Well, I'll tell you this. You have a camp set up where your dinosaurs and you can rest, but... If you go off into the underbrush, you're not going to get much rest because you're not going to be able to make a camp in the underbrush. Also, the dinosaurs probably will have trouble hanging out there too. So your choices are kind of to stay where you are and hope for the best or to make your way back to Tanjika itself. I don't want to go back to Tanjika. So what are you going to do about this Karak that happened in the distance? Do you guys want to stay here, or do you guys want to move into Tanjiga? Let's stay here. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do that's different since that Karak happened, that here? 
maybe we should get more people on maybe like watch two, at a time. Two people on watch at a time. Oh, that's a really good idea. What else could you do to I, protect yourselves? It could be uh, me and DJ, and we need at least one of the major fighters like DJ or Flash on watch at a time. With dinosaurs yeah, on watch with as well. Dinosaurs too. Ooh, okay. How about all of the torches and the fire that you have going right now? Yeah, what are you going to do about that? Let's keep like maybe four torches on and let's tur- get rid of the fire because who that is the fire is pretty big and it's the biggest light source. Well, which characters have dark vision? Does anybody have dark vision? I think I have dark vision. I have dark vision for 120 feet. Right. I don't know if I have dark vision. Do you have dark vision, Caitlin? Yes. How do you know that you have dark vision, but Robin doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> We're the same race. Since you're both tabaxi, is dark vision on your character sheet? Yes. Does it have a distance? No. No? Why don't Ro- why doesn't Robin go grab the book that has the tabaxi in it, and you can see what the distance is for dark what vision? What book is it? Oh, that's great. It is called Volo's Guide to Monsters. Since both the tabaxi and the dark elf have dark vision but our dragonborn and two humans do not maybe it's actually a better idea how about a person with dark vision on a watch and a person with heavier amounts of hit points to uh be on a watch what are the watches set them for the rest of the night yeah let's okay i'm gonna write them down okay how about dj do you want to do first watch i can go on first watch okay uh, second, Chris and Flash. Sure. But I don't have dark vision. Yeah, that's Flash, why you're with. That's why you're with me. Because exactly. I have dark vision. I could go alone, or should I bring somebody? Well, we also have Georgington. Oh yes, me and Georgington. And Tabaxi have dark vision to sixty feet. So the question is: Are you leaving any torches lit at all, or are you going to snuff out the fire and the torches? I say because everybody on watch has somebody with dark vision, we should burn out all the light in total. It'll make us safer. By the way, I'm going to do a repeat of the three watches, so we have six watches in total. Okay. And do we have anything that can let our companion on watch that doesn't have dark vision, like, be able to know where we are? Well, they'll be able to see, but just very, very badly. With watches set. I know that, um, like, old humans can see better in the dark than, like, like, very, like, young humans. Okay. So Flash could see very well. He can see okay in the dark, but he still doesn't have dark vision because he's a human. So with that, the watches are set. You huddle down. And you douse all the torches and put out your campfire. And then you try to keep your dinosaurs quiet as they settle down to rest. It's not too hard. And a very dark and worrisome night passes during the first watch. Can I have the person with dark vision make a perception check? 24 in total. You hear nothing during your watch there's no sounds and nothing comes towards the clearing at all who ever is doing the second watch the person with dark vision needs to make that perception check 11 you're not too sure if you heard something or it was just in your imagination as the night closes in and you're having trouble figuring out what's going on and then The third watch. The person with perception makes a perception check, please. Seven. (laughs) And on the third watch, you hear nothing at all. You do not hear the sounds of the beast that made the kara in the distance pass overhead. You do not see the giant wings blot out the stars, and you do not see its gigantic beak that could swallow you whole pass by overhead. But because the torches were all put out and the fire doused, it does not see you or espy you, and it passes on in the jungle at night. Lord. Okay. The fourth watch. No, we're done. The dawn breaks, 
and whoever's on the third watch begins to see the sunlight creep up through the jungle and everything grows lighter as day finally arrives. You guys can normally do six watches, but remember the bugs attacked at night. It is now the daytime. It is time for breakfast and for feeding dinosaurs. So, who feeds their dinosaur first? Okay, we have the... Oh, you guys were on watch last, so it makes perfect sense that you would feed the dinosaur. It was DJ and Sasha on a watch no. together? It was DJ and... It was me and Georgington. Ah, okay. So, Georgington doesn't have a dinosaur, so... Then absolutely, Sasha would get to feed her dinosaur first, since she woke up first. So, go feed your dinosaur. Make me an animal handling check, please. My dinosaur hates me. Mm. Seven. Yeah, your dinosaur begrudgingly eats their breakfast and looks at you with a rolled eye expression like, how could you? And then everybody wakes up because they hear the sounds of Sasha feeding her dinosaur and they all get started on the day. Who feeds their dinosaur next? Oh, everybody wants to feed their dinosaur. Let's just go in order then. So DJ, feed your dinosaur. Now, if you guys offer me descriptions of your dinosaur feeding process, you will get advantage on the check. Can I offer? We can retcon this. We'll go back. Okay. So, Sasha, would you like to describe feeding your dinosaur to me? Alyssa rolls her eyes and eats the apple, but is just so tired of watch. She just, ugh, and she's just rolling around and not paying attention to Sasha. She just wants to sleep. She doesn't care. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, you may have advantage on your check. Roll the other day. I got a five, which is worse. Yep, so it's still about the same, and she just ignores you, eats her apple begrudgingly. All right, what is your description, DJ? As I hand Thunder uh, his uh, food, uh, slowly he sniffs it, but doesn't eat it at first because he's so tired. Then uh, he looks at it again and slowly eats it. All right. Roll your dice to see how you do. I got the same. Oh, so it doesn't really matter either way. What'd you get total? Ten. So the dinosaur begrudgingly eats your food as well. He's not particularly amenable. Is it a he or a she? He. He also lost his love a few days ago. Go for it, Caitlin. I'm going to take my Dimetrodon's food and I'm going to hold it out to her in my hand so that she can eat it. Mm -hmm. All right, roll with advantage. 25. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's the perfect way to feed a Dimetrodon, apparently, is by hand. And your Dimetrodon is very happy and eats all of their food very, very full. And feeding a Dimetrodon in the morning is the best time to feed a Dimetrodon. All right, who's next? I am going to attempt to teach Ollie to play catch by tossing the olives at him. Oh, okay. That's great. Roll with advantage. Seven. Yes. Uh, he doesn't really understand what you're doing. You just keep throwing them. And they keep hitting him in the head and he gets sad because you're hitting him in the head with olives and he curls up in a ball and you end up feeding him breakfast, but playing catch is not the best way to feed an Oviraptor, apparently. The last person to feed their dinosaur is Flash. My dinosaur really likes turnips. So I cut up the turnips and he flies up in the air and I try to catch it on his wing. He tries to put it in his mouth with his wing. Oh, that's adorable. Roll with advantage. 10 and 10, 20. What? Did somebody else not roll two 10s as well? I did. You guys are like the normalest bunch of ever. So a win advantage, buddy, you only take one of the dice, although I'm glad you can roll. You add the, the 10 to 10. So now we just take a look at your handle animal. You have a total of 10, just like TJ, and that means your dinosaur's like, whatever, I don't care. Tries to eat, not very hungry. Maybe the morning isn't the best time to feed a pterodactyl. Yeah, it's in the afternoon. Possibly. You fed your animals, and is today the day of the race, or is it tomorrow? Today. Tomorrow. Today. Uh, today. Today, 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 today,
can I tell you something? They probably sing the national anthem at everybody the start hears, of the Everybody hears somebody singing this. Uh, today is the dinosaur race. Okay, yes. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment, too. So everyone has begged and pled for today to be the day of the dinosaur race. But it's not. The dinosaur race is tomorrow. Uh, you have a whole other day and night to get through in order to be at the dinosaur race in time. You managed to get all of the things you needed to get done in the day you had. Now you have time to train your animals and practice the oh. race course and do all of the things that you might need to do. And we won't spend our whole game session on that. We're only going to spend five minutes but if you come up with any interesting and helpful things, it might help you with the race tomorrow. So, starting with Sasha, since her hand is in the air, starting with Robin, what is something you think would help you in the race tomorrow? I think that it would be really helpful to bring along some extra treats to coach her, to coach Alyssa, because she's going to be very tired running that big bridge. Having extra treats, that's great. I have a good idea. So you have to go and get treats for your dinosaurs. What is something else that you guys could do to help you win the race tomorrow? Sticky handlebars, but are but like if Dan but dinosaurs don't even feel them. Sticky handlebars? What because do you mean I'm, by that? Because I have to ride on the bottom of my dinosaur. Yeah. So I'm gonna like. So you need you need to improve the saddles and riding equipment that you have to make it even better for you to ride your dinosaur? Is that what you're trying to get to? Yeah, and I'm trying to, like, tr if if I want, if I fell off, then I have to, like, hang on to the bottom of my saddle and, like, try to... So you think that getting some better equipment and maybe getting some resin and some some newer leather straps might help with uh, your dinosaurs? I think that's a great idea. Okay. Wait, I think but this might be a good idea. It's just everything but um the um the saddles on the bottom. And Alex has his hand up. What do you think, Alex? I think if we can do this somehow, we should tell our dinosaurs that after the race they get a lot of treats. Oh, after like, the race yeah, they get after treats. the race, so it's sort of trying coax them into doing a good job. I have a question. Who here is really good at animal handling? Who who here has a really good score at animal handling? What is your score at animal handling? I have a plus nine. A plus nine to animal handling. How about the rest of you? Are the rest of you very good at animal handling? Nah. No. Don't have it as a skill. I have a one. Yeah. Minus? I have minus one to animal handling. I have minus one to all my wisdom. DJ, tests. you're a zero? I've got three. I'm just not skilled in it. Excellent. Well, Flash has a zero because his a, his wisdom is a zero score. So none of you except for Caitlin's character are very good at animal handling. And even Caitlin's character doesn't really know dinosaurs that well, right? No. So what is something maybe you could do to know more about the dinosaurs you're using to raise? I could talk to it. Yeah, you could talk to the animal. You could... Do you have that spell? Speak with animals? She does have note. Are there people in Tenjika who know more about the dinosaurs? There's most likely dinosaur trainers. Right. Yeah. Does anybody have an idea about that? I'd say we should probably try to go into Tanjika and find people that work with dinosaurs so we can ride them better and understand them better. Mm, that's a good point. Yes, Maybe I like that. Maybe someone has like a, a little book that has information on all the different dinosaurs. So you could go to a library or something. I mean, finding a person to teach you might be quicker than reading a book, but you could definitely try for that too if all else fails, right? It's just my, my worry with trying to get a person is, well, there are wanted posters up. Trying to find a book, your worry is there's wanted posters up. So we have weapons if we do need to do that. 
Okay, I, I'd rather not resort to bloodshed here, though. Just I say, mean, uh, we yeah. don't need to kill Just anybody. Say. Okay, before it devolves into arguments about the problem about this, we're just offering solutions right now. We're not offering objections to those solutions because we're not often running around and proceeding through with all of them at the moment. I now have four different options here for what you you all could do to help you win the race tomorrow. Do we have any other ideas? I'm looking at Caitlin. Well, I know that I'm doing the part of the race where my dinosaur is going through like alleys and stuff. Mm -hmm. So maybe I could think of like some sort of maze and kind of train her how to get through it that would be a really good idea be hard to create that sort of thing in one day but you might be able to take your dinosaur to that section of the city and go through it and check to see what the race map looks like i was thinking i would i could maybe like find a group of trees where the trees kind of zigzag yeah so I could teach her how to get through there. Well, that's perfectly valid as well and doesn't incorporate you needing to go into the city to investigate. But you still wouldn't know what the layout of the race looks like. And that's going to be pretty important, too. But nonetheless, I like that offer of zigzagging through the underbrush to try to fi- make your dinosaur better. And you also better at riding your dinosaur Daddy, through the underbrush. Yes, Will? I think we can see the fire hoops just like building them. Oh, they're sure. Just, they're not on fire yet they're on fire when the race starts i love it yeah they're building the fire hoops right now we have extra treats we have improving the riding equipment we have promising the dinosaurs to get extra treats in a dessert after the race and then we have finding some dinosaur trainers to give you some tips and tricks and the last one we got was doing some of the race tactics ourselves, maybe in the jungle or during the day. Well, these are all great offers, and you all will have advantage on your race day checks. As you have taught your dinosaurs better things, you've gotten improved equipment, you found a dinosaur trainer, or at least somebody who is willing to talk to you about dinosaurs to teach you some great tactics, And you found the right treats for those dinosaurs so that you can promise them after the race a big meal, but also feed them at the right time during the race. This takes the whole day and well into the evening. Are you staying in the field out in the woods again? Yeah. Out in the jungle again? But we make sure to douse and keep all of our torches unlit. Ah. Can I tell you something, Daddy? Yes. Flash has a sleeping bag, and can I tell you where he sleeps? Where does he sleep? Inside of the sleeping bag. He curls himself into a little ball inside the sleeping bag. That's normally where people sleep, is inside a sleeping bag. No, his head is inside the sleeping bag. Two. Yes, all of him is inside the sleeping bag. And he tied it up. Okay. He's in a sack. (laughs) One of the dinosaurs trips on him. (laughs) (laughs) That probably hurt Will more than it would hurt the dinosaur. All right. Who are doing? We've got the watches again. So I need the people with dark vision to once again, since the torches have been doused and the fire is out, the first person on watch make their perception check. 25. Wow. What's your perception score? You're plus eight or something or plus four or plus seven? I'm plus seven. With such an amazing perception score. You see the giant mega pterosaur fly gliding overhead during the watch. It does not crack at night, but it does seem to be looking for something as it flies through the air. And since you got over 18, you see that. But since you got over 24, well, 24 or higher, you see that there is a rider on the giant mega pterosaur. I think that I should do something like wake everybody up and tell them. Oh, you suddenly wake everybody up and tell them? How do you do that? How are you going to wake up Flash? <laughs> I know who's on that dinosaur. Okay, wait, she doesn't wake, she's wake everybody up. <laughs> something really weird. You just yell? Do you wait for the dinosaur to go by or is the dinosaur still flying overhead? 
I wait for the dinosaur to go by. Oh, phew. Okay, the dinosaur <laughs> flies off. You wait a couple of minutes or a moment. How, how long do you wait for the dinosaur to go overhead? I wait two minutes. Two minutes. That's perfect. And then you startle everyone awake and you say... Guys, I just saw that weird thing that I think made that noise. The karak? Yes, and it had a rider. Someone was riding it, and it was flying. I think and as, I... So- and as soon as you say it had a rider, Sasha just gets down on her knees and just starts worrying herself. She's like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh. It's oh, Tiger Claw. Okay, while you're Claw. doing that, what's everybody else? Oh, The rider flash. was Tiger Claw. The rider was Tiger Claw. It might be Tiger Claw. <sighs> I don't know. The rider kind of looked like a humanoid figure. Well, tabaxi look like humanoids as well. Yeah. Two arms, two legs, a torso, a head on top. Yeah. That's what makes <laughs> if, if a humanoid. If they didn't have a head on top, that might be a little concerning. Did it have stripes? She couldn't see. It was black. All she saw yeah. was the figure framed and illuminated by the li- by the stars by in the, the sky. Way, by the way, Daddy, Flash was daydreaming of it, but he was he he could close up of it. Everyone has been informed that a mega pterosaur is flying around in the jungle at night. The watch ends. You guys finally manage to get back to sleep, and the second watch begins. Who is the one who leads the second watch? All right, Alex and Flash. Is that right? You said Alex and Flash. That. And what did you get on your perception check? Twelve. Twelve is not enough to see the pterosaur actually once again flies oh you may roll with disadvantage you did not see it either neither of you see the pterosaur soar overhead again circling ever closer to the glade but neither of you are concerned at all because you don't notice it as you take your watch nothing enters the field you end your watch it is the beginning of the third watch the third and final watch now i allowed flash to make a perception check with disadvantage you may do so too if you would like savannah georgington is on my watch oh yeah you're on georgington doesn't just you yeah that was a seven i don't think i did well. seven is not enough but all Daddy, you and it, yes we remember the episode but we had no rolls Right. I love those episodes. Okay. With a seven, you did not hear the mega pterosaur fly even closer in the glade. All you needed was a ten to notice this, and you didn't notice it. And it almost lands in the field, but flies on, unawares still, of you hiding in the the glade because you've taken such precautions to get everything settled you're gonna kill us everyone breathes a sigh of relief (sighs) (laughs) and you awaken in the morning feed your dinosaurs and begin the trek back to the city but it is bright and early in the morning and you can hear the trumpet fanfares in the distance as the race is about to start and the anthem plays but you're late you're late getting there and you need to hurry as fast as you can so that you can make it in time for the race to begin because you believe that you're running behind I just get on Terry and fly over to the fire hoops. You fly as quickly as you can to get to the spot, but you don't all start the race in your varied different locations. You all have to start your race in the main square. Lucy finds you on the edge of the city and she says, you're so late. You are very, very late. Hurry, hurry. Come with me. Okay, Lucy. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Guys, are- where are your race colors? Why are your dinosaurs not marked up? We don't... What? 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 Your dinosaurs are supposed to be in your team colors. What are our team colors? What? We don't know Why what Why aren't colors. you... You are a team, yes? Our name yes, is we Tloof. Are. We are Tloof. Yeah, you are Tloof. Didn't you not read the pamphlet? We never got a pamphlet. What? Who has the pamphlet? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Flash, did you not read the pamphlet? I forgot to. You have to have race colors, she says. Your dinosaurs have to be marked with your team. Okay. It's blue. Dark blue, light blue, purple, yellow. How about green? 
Yeah, green, green. We'll go green. All green. <laughs> okay, how, how are you going to do that quickly? You have no time. Isn't it just full of grass around? There's grass everywhere, Stop yeah. Look at the grass. That's fine, yeah. Grass. <laughs> Any ideas, Chris? I think rolling the grass sounds good to me. Uh, yeah. 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 We start like rubbing grass in the areas where like we would have like markings. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Frantically rub. Perfect. And we we also are bringing the grass with us. We're rubbing it while we run to oh, the place. Oh, that's perfect. I like that. Yeah. yeah. You're like, rubbing grass on your animals yeah. as you rush in. But Fla- but Flash has a bunch of paints. So she he says, paints himself. Oh, where did he get these paints from? Um, he brought it from home. He has paints in the magical backpack. Yeah, that's fine. Be- I think I actually think that Slobby turned into paints. Yeah, he did. Hey, did Slobby turn into paints. Yeah, he I don't did. know if Slobby can turn into paint. Yeah, like he that, can. But, but he can turn into a paint can and hold paint. Now, th- Lucy says it is good you have these paints because all your dinosaurs need numbers too. Okay. Okay. Numbers? Uh, what? Paint numbers what? on the saddles. Twenty-six. Twenty-six is my number. Okay. Paint numbers on the saddles. I'll be... Okay. Your pamphlet has all of the numbers in okay, it. Okay, okay. Yep. Whose number... What numbers are they? 26, 17, what's all your birthday numbers? 30. 30? 3. 3. 19. And 19. All right, you write all... Of, you paint all of those numbers. You stain your dinosaurs with grass stains. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have, we have no time. Run! And we just start running while we're painting. I said- <laughs> and paint is flying everywhere. And Lucy says, it took forever for me to find you. Tiger Claw has been hunting you for the last two days. Ooh. He has been trying to stop you because he found out you were entering the race. Uh-oh, he ain't stopping us now. Nobody, and nobody, no. Nope. twice as fast. Anger blaring in in our eyes as we run. You're wondering if I go wandering with you. What kind of trouble we'll get ourselves into? Would it be wrong to tag along with a band of vagabonds? You wonder if I'd wander with you. So I'll spread the word and you beat the drum. Round up the troops and get the gang to come and we'll leave the streets. This concludes this episode of Tavern Tales Jr. We'll be back in one month with a brand new episode. Our intro and outro music is Through the Woods by Okie Dokie Brothers. Find their music on iTunes by checking them out at www.okidoki.org and follow them on Twitter at Okie Dokie Bros. We love a review on iTunes. Check us out on Twitter at Tavern underscore Tales. See you all later. I'm wondering if you'd come wandering my way If you ever get lost or if the trail leads you astray The music of the pack can always bring you back I wonder, can we wander away? And I'll spread the word and you beat the drum Round up the troops and get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets in these neighborhoods Head over the river